I'm going to talk about a very useful technique called ransack and use the illustration or example of matching points from one image to the next. So before we found that to match points we found um, interesting points or uh, corners you could call them in one image and track them to a second image using a technique such as cross correlation. But even though the score was high, we had some incorrect matches. For example, this point 6 here in this image is not even visible in the second image, and so it happens to be matched to an incorrect location. So how do we identify these uh, outliers or incorrect matches? We can use the fundamental matrix to do this. Remember that the fundamental matrix um, F um, is used uh, any point, any correctly matched point between image 0 and image 1 satisfies this relation that um, the point U0 in image 0 and the point U1 in image 1, um, this, this equation should equal 0. So what we'll do is we'll first uh, pick a subset of matches. Uh, hopefully the matches in this subset are correct. We fit a fundamental matrix F to these points and then um, see which points agree with that F. In other words, which ones satisfy this equation. If they do, then they're inliers. If they don't, then they're outliers. So as an example, um, this is the code we saw before that finds interest points in one image um, using the uh, criteria of the minimum eigenvalue of this uh, autocorrelation matrix and um, here it's finding uh, local peaks and uh, finding the top 40 points uh, in that image, the ones with the uh, most interesting scores of the 40 most interesting scores. This is the code that matched uh, those points to a second image using the cross-correlation score and this uh, draws those matches. So let me go ahead and um, run that. Okay, so this is the points that were found in the first image. And here are the matches from the first image to the second image. Okay, so now this code um, does the sampling of points and it uses the MATLAB function called randperm. So it generates a random permutation of numbers between 1 and the length of this first list. So in this case it's something like 35 points. And then it will choose the first eight elements from that uh, set of permuted numbers and then it will go ahead and display um, those points, those eight points that it shows. I used eight because that's the minimum number of points that's needed to fit a uh, fundamental matrix. Okay, so these are the two sets of points now that were chosen um, as my seed set to calculate F. So uh, it looks like most of these are correct with the exception of uh, this point 6 was chosen. So that's an incorrect point because it has an incorrect match over here. But let's see what it does. Okay, so this is the code that fits a fundamental matrix between two sets of points. Um, this is the uh, linear equation. Um, it sets up a set of linear equations and solves that, um, forces rank 2, and displays the result. So this is the fundamental matrix then that was calculated as a result. Oops. Okay, so next um, we have to uh, check all points now to see if they fit that relationship um, consisting of x 
1 f times x2. So ideally this score should be 0. So if it's not, that is the residual score here. So um, I didn't threshold or anything here. I just wanted to see which points fit and which points didn't. This other code draws the epipolar line corresponding to a point in image 2 uh, in image 1. Okay, so this uh, is just going to step through each point, each pair of points, and calculate the score. So um, the first point that it shows was this point 1, and this is the epipolar line in, in image 1 here. So there's a bit of an error here, not too bad. Um, this point fits pretty well. You can see that. Um, the epipolar line passes almost directly through the correct match here. Um, point 3 matches well and point 4. This point way off. Um, the correct match is is exactly what's picked here but the epipolar line is way off so this would have a large residual here. Um, point 6, point 7, 8, Here's another point that should be a correct match, but has a large residual. So this, these large residuals are due to the fact that we started with a incorrect, we had a subset of points that contained one incorrect match. There's another. Let's see here. Yeah, these all look pretty good. Okay, there's a bad, that's a good match, but it's a, a large residual again. Uh, that one might be a bad match anyway. And that's also a large residual. Okay, so now what, what if we ran this again? Let's see if we get um, a initial subset that contains uh, all good points. So here now you can see that um, this random set of eight points uh, looks all correct. So these matches um, do look co correct visually here. So um, we should get a good fundamental matrix from this set of eight points. Okay, so let's check out what it comes up with here. So that point fits well, that one fits well, fits well. So all of these are fitting really well, except for, okay, point six, which is really, truly a bad point. This has a very large um, residual. So that should be flagged as a outlier. Uh, all of these look good. Okay, this point is also a mismatch. Um, it should be matched here, so that's also a large residual. And this is also a mismatch. So it looks like um, if we had chosen this set of eight points to calculate the fundamental matrix, we would have correctly identified uh, some outliers. Looks like a f there's four outliers here. That one might be an outlier too. Okay. All right, so how do we choose that initial set of eight points? Well, that's this algorithm here called RANSAC. It stands for Random Sample Con Consensus. It's actually a very general technique, can be used to find inliers and outliers for any type of model fitting. So the algorithm is um, we randomly select a sample of S data points. In that case, we choose S, we, we chose eight points for our example. We, um, we fit a model to that and then we see which points uh, fit that model. Basically, we can, we can check to see if it's within a threshold T. So we call that the consensus set of the sample. And that defines the inliers. Um, and then there's an optional step of refitting the model using all the inliers. And then we just, we just keep doing that, and we look for the, um, the trial with the largest consensus set, and that that should contain the, the correct model. 
so it's a it's an iterative process you know you just keep it keep on doing this and hopefully at least one of the samples that you select will contain all inliers and no outliers okay so how many samples how many iterations do we need okay so let's say we know epsilon which is the probability that a point is an outlier so let's say I had um, 10% outliers. That's about what I had in my example. So 1 minus epsilon or 90% would be the probability that a point would be an inlier. So the probability that a sample of size s is all inliers is 1 minus epsilon to the s. So 1 minus that is the probability of getting at least one outlier in that sample. So if I choose n samples or n iterations, the probability that all of samples have at least one outlier is this to the n. And But we want at least one sample to have no outliers. So that probability is 1 minus the probability that they're all out, outliers. So we want this probability of not having all outliers to be some high value such as 0.99. So we can solve for n and we get this relationship right here. Okay, so let's plug in some values for um, for epsilon and n. So this table shows um, the proportion of outliers, epsilon, versus the sample size. This would be the little s. So if we had, let's say, 10% outliers, and we had to choose um, eight points to fit our model, we would need nine sample sets or nine iterations to be sure within 99% probability that we wouldn't have any outliers. So, um, but you can see though that this goes up very large if I have a large number of outliers here. So it's important if you use this technique to try to keep your, your sample size low or um, try to ensure that you have a small number of outliers.